Now, all of you have planned, but 12-week planning is very different than traditional planning in a couple of ways. The first is there's greater predictability. The further you plan in the future, the less certainty there is. You know that because you do financial planning with your clients, but it's true in any area. That's why annual plans and beyond tend to be very numbers-based. It's just very difficult to know what I should be doing uh, 10, 11 months from now. But when we bring that horizon near term to 12 weeks, the predictability goes up exponentially. And that's why 12-week plans are not only numbers-based, but they're very activity-based, which is critical because we just, we just, just talked about if you're going to create a different result, you're going to have to do things differently and do different things. Those are the tactics in the plan, if you will. The second thing that's different is there's greater focus. Most plans have too much in them. People start out the year overwhelmed. They go through the year diffused, right? You make a little bit of progress across a broad spectrum. That's a recipe for mediocrity. With the 12-week year, our approach is let's be great at a few things versus mediocre at many. And we can do that because you're not planning for 12 months. You're planning for 12 weeks. At the end of that, you're going to come back. You're going to stop the world. You're going to look at what worked, what didn't work, what's different in the marketplace, and you're going to reconnect with your vision. You're going to lock and load and go again for another 12 weeks. You know, when planning first made its way into business probably 60, 70 years ago, you could look out in the future five, six, seven years, and not a lot was going to change. That's not the case today. And yet most organizations, most individuals still plan the way they did 60 years ago. It's an annual event. If you want to be at your best, that has to change. And then finally, how the plan is structured. Um, the only reason we plan is because it helps you implement. But there's a structure to it that makes it more implementable. That's probably not a word, but I think you know what I mean. So, and it starts with this notion of 12-week um, goals. And that is that longer-term vision brought near-term. Where do I be, need to be at the end of 12 weeks to be standing that vision? And this is where it starts to get a little uncomfortable because less is more. Less is more. And then we take each one of those goals and you build out the tactical plan. Those are the daily, weekly actions. That's really the engine of the plan, if you will. And not the long laundry list of everything you could do, but what we call the critical few. If you can do it in five, you don't need six. If you can do it in six, you don't need seven. If it takes 12, it takes 12, but not one more. It's about the critical few. Now, most plans are conceptual. You can't execute concepts. You got to get tactical. So let me give you an example. Conceptual would be get referrals. When that shows up on my plan this week, what do I do with that? Tactical says ask for referrals at every open, present, and close. Do you see the difference? Huge, huge difference. So a little extra effort in the planning process pays great dividends on the execution side of things. So again, I'm going to give you some resources to help you do this. But just know this, that you need a focused tactical plan. The more focused that is, the more effective you're going to be. So my challenge to you is you have a plan like that, or is your plan in your head. <laughs> so one study that said even if you know what you need to do, if you write it down, the probability of you doing it goes up 80%. That's not a smidgen. That's a huge amount. Right? So don't be afraid to put it on paper. All right, we've got vision and we've got planning. Mike Tyson said everyone has a plan until they get it in the mouth. <laughs> That's where process control comes in. So I've got a cartoon here. Guy's in his high rise says, no Thursdays out. How about never? Is never good for you? <laughs> if that's you on the other end of that line, that's getting hit in the mouth. <laughs> what matters is what happens when you hang up. That's where process control kicks in. Process control are tools and events that help keep you working the plan even when, maybe especially when, you don't feel like it. The example I like to use is Michael Phelps. I can, I can promise you there were days Michael didn't feel like training or getting in the pool, but he did. And he did to a large extent because he had processes and systems around him that made it easier for him to get in the pool than not get in the pool. That's what you need. Because I don't know if you notice, but some days you're disciplined, some you're not. <laughs> What you want are support systems so that even on the days you're not disciplined, the critical things get done. So I want to talk about two things that can really make a difference there. The first is what we call the weekly plan. And what you're seeing are um, screenshots from our online tools. I'll talk more about those in a moment. But conceptually now you've got this longer term vision. You brought it near term, set a 12 week goal that aligns with that, and you built out a tactical plan. What the system does is it takes that tactical plan and takes just what's due in this particular week and creates a weekly plan. So in a sense, it's like a 1 12th slice. It doesn't contain everything you do in your job. It doesn't even contain everything in the 12-week plan, just those things in the 12-week plan that are due this week. Now, here's the thing. By default, those are the most important things you have this week. Everything else, everything else is secondary. Think about that. 
Because these are the things you said are the most important things to get you where you want to be at the end of 12 weeks, which is aligned with your longer-term vision. By default, there's nothing more important than that. <laughs> That's the tool that you manage your day and week with. I have a, a clear plastic container. I got my 12-week plan on one side. Every week I pull a weekly plan, put it in there. That's what I'm going to. 20 minutes opens up my calendar. I don't go to my to-do list. I don't go to my voicemail. I go to my weekly plan. Because I know if I got that stuff done, I had a great week. If I got everything else done, even if I wrote a lot of business and I didn't get the stuff done, I lost a week. Now, that's a different mindset. But business is lag. <laughs> right? When you don't execute this week, you compromise the future. You with me? Make sense? All right, so um, greater predictability, greater focus, structured for implementation. Um, process control, then we've got the weekly plan, which is really that 12-week plan brought near term into daily weekly action, structured for implementation. And then the second thing is, did you know you are seven times more likely to be successful if you're involved in peer support? There's an interesting study with heart patients, bypass patients, in fact, that, that uh, made the cover of Fast Company a number of years ago in an article called Change or Die. If you haven't seen that, you should Google it. Uh, but it, what it looked at were patients that had a bypass surgery, and they looked at that one, it was very expensive, high relapse, uh, very painful, and for most people, heart disease is controllable by lifestyle. So they started working with these patients, and they found that when patients were literally told by their doctors, if you don't change the way you're living, right, you won't be here two or three years from now. Right? Now that seems like a pretty big impetus to change. <laughs> you agree? Right? If you don't do something different, you're toast. <laughs> the sad part was when they went back a year later and surveyed them, 90% of them, 90% of them had reverted back to their old lifestyle habits. And that's life or death. How much more difficult is it in your business? What they found, though, here's the good news. I don't want to <laughs> leave you on that. The good news is, is that when they involved those patients in peer support, meaning they met with one or two other people once a week for just a few minutes, the success rate was nearly 80%. And we found the same thing in business. If you're willing to meet with a couple peers and keep it honest and keep it real, you'll do better. You'll perform better. So weekly plan and, and peer support, two very simple things. All right, that's process control. So we've got vision planning, process control. The fourth discipline is scorekeeping. Measurement drives the process. Measurement's the anchor of reality, right? So when we go out to the physical universe, we get feedback on the actions we're taking. Are the actions we're taking having the impact we thought they would? And, and yet, a lot of people tend to shy away from measuring.